It is a huge, huge, unbelievable honor today to be podcast interviewing Dr. Beman Shakibai. Did I say that right? Benham Shakibai, exactly. Benham Shakibai. And you're an oral surgeon, master in implantology, master in periodontology. You're a specialist in microdentistry. I'm your hugest fan. I just love what you're doing. It's truly amazing and over my head. I want to read, read up your, your bio. Um, from 1993 to 1998, studied in dentistry at Berlin University. Uh, 96 to 2001, a doctorate at Berlin University in clinical guided bone regeneration. Uh, specialization in oral surgery in Berlin. Mastership implantology and periodontology. Specialist in oral microsurgery and microdentistry at Carl Zeiss Academy. Specialist of oral surgery, oral and maxillofacial surgery in Iran. Own clinic in microsurgical implantology and periodontology in Germany. Invention, development, and international publication of microsurgical techniques and instruments in oral implantology. 2008 scientific consultant of German Association of Implantology. Instructor of Implant Microsurgery at Zeiss Dental Academy. In 2009, was the ambassador of Quintessence Publishing Group. That is so amazing. 2012, founder of Spur First Specialized Microsurgical Implantology Clinic in Middle East in Tehran, Iran. Exactly. 2014, founder of International Group of Implant Microsurgery. Internationally granted awards, um, Best Practitioner 2007 of German Society of Periodontology. First Scientific Prize 2010 of German Society of Periodontology. Innovation Award in Medical Science 2011 of Tehran University in Iran. Best Education Lecture 2012 of Zeiss Dental Academy in Austria. Congress Best Presentation 2014 of a Med in USA. European Business Management Award in Croatia. I mean, man, you are a legend and you're just a baby. I'm a, I'm a decade older than you. And you have more credentials than I'll ever have. Thank you so much for joining me today. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Thank you for publishing my CV. Uh, it's a great honor to be with you today. I mean, uh, uh, our first connection was uh, through uh, uh, Cancer Rota two years ago, if you remember. I do. And um, we, had, we had a chat uh, one and a half years ago on, uh, on a Skype, but... Unfortunately, because of our because of the shifting of our clinic to the to the new rooms here in uh, here in Tehran, I was so uh, you know so busy with with uh, with this issue. So we had a delay to find to each other. So I am very happy uh, to be your guest today. So where were where were you born? I mean, you, I don't know where you're born, but you're uh, you you've. Uh, pr gone to school in Germany, Berlin. I mean, you lecture all over the world. I mean, you, you could lecture anywhere. I, I consider you more of an earthly citizen. You, you could practice anywhere. Where were you born? Did you, were you born in Tehran and you went back home or? or? Yes, I am. I am born in south of Iran to be, uh, just to be exact. Uh, uh, I am born in uh, south of Iran. The, the city is named Ahwaz. This is uh, just in the neighborhood to Iraqi border. Uh, and uh, therefore, because of this location, um, we 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 lost everything through the through the time of Iran Iraq war, that was back in the 80s, and uh, that was also the reason for my for my parents to to send me to Germany to continue my education at the school because you know um, after outbreak of uh, of Iran Iraq war. Um, it was it was very hard for us uh, to to uh, to continue this the school. I had to to change the school uh, within three years, five or six times, and that was very hard. So I le left Iran in that time and um, uh, went to Germany to to the family of my uncle in Berlin. And um, at that time I was twelve. It was uh, 1986. And uh, so I um, uh, went to school. I, I started the school in Germany uh, uh, with uh, the school uh, level eight, uh, and um, it was a it was a tough time because um, you you might imagine uh, German language is uh, totally different than uh, the international language around the world, which is English. 
and um, I could speak uh, broken English at the time and uh, German language was totally new for me I had uh, to to learn it from from a point from the start up and um, it was a tough time because uh, the German immigration uh, immigration government uh, didn't want to have me didn't want to have me there and uh, the the only uh, the only condition uh, which was uh, which made me able to um, uh, to stay in Germany was to go to uh, to a camp of uh, um, mal addition children um, so um, it was very hard time but uh, I continued the school and I um, uh, I made my uh, degree or, or I finished the school in in Berlin and started dentistry in uh, back in 1990 uh, uh, in 1993 and uh, I started the dentistry um, study at uh, Berlin University and continued as you described before on my CV that, that is so amazing. Um, probably 80% of my podcast listeners are Americans, and the other 20% are about 135 countries. And it's so good for them to hear this because so many times I'll meet a dentist like yourself who, who came through a war or something so hard, moving to different countries. And it makes everyone listening who's whining about their schedule or their overhead or you know, they, they, they think they have all these stresses. And then you meet a poor young dentist like yourself who had to live through – the Iran Iraq war and go to a different I, I mean could, I couldn't even imagine um, you know I podcast interviewed another woman who um, survived the Vietnam War and came here I mean <clears throat> and it just puts everything in perspective it's it's why, why I like to do charity dentistry because you go to a different country where they're all poor and they're all so grateful and you're working on kids in an orphanage and it makes all your problems seem like they're really not problems. That just, I just can't imagine uh, living through that. I'm, I'm glad you made it. I'm glad you're safe because dentistry needs more people like you because your work, you look like Beethoven playing the piano. <laughs> so so I, want you, I want you to start with that. Why, why did you pick oral surgery? Do you just, like, uh, you just like blood and guts or is it an adrenaline rush for you as opposed to doing a filling or a crown? Yeah. I mean, uh, there were different reasons why I have chosen... Uh, or a surgery for uh, specialization or to specialize in. Uh, the first one was the fact uh, that I am coming uh, from, um, from a family uh, in which my uh, grandpa uh, was a doctor, my uncles are doctors, and uh, my father was a, a famous gynecologist in south of Iran, and he was a university lecture also in Ahwas in the city where, where we, we used to live and uh, that was the that was the first reason like a dynasty you know we are a medical dynasty uh, in Iran and uh, Benham I mean I uh, my person was was forced I mean somehow to continue this way you know and um, sometimes I, I I felt uh, really big pressure on my on my shoulder on my shoulders to be uh, in such a dynasty family because uh, um, somehow I I didn't had to, you know um, um, the 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 aim to to get uh, to become a specialist in oral surgery but uh, after a while uh, during the dentistry time during the study time. Um, I developed um, a passion uh, for this uh, for this subject. So um, after a while, after a few years in dentistry, um, I with, with the passion I have uh, I had developed, uh, that was uh, that was the right subject for me, and uh, um, I wanted to continue the special the specialist way and uh, to go further uh, as far as I could. So uh, that was the, the first reason. The second reason, um, normally or usually all Iranian doctors, uh, they love to go to invasive uh, uh, specializations of med 
medicine <laughs> and um, all of the all of the uh, general practitioners i mean no matter if they are in general medicine or in dead history they want to cut and they love the blood and they want to suture and so this is also in 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 my stomach or in my in my heart and uh, that was the second reason uh, so i have chosen uh, oral surgery uh, but uh, from the from the first uh, day of my oral surgery specialization it was clear for me that uh, uh, i just i didn't just uh, uh, want to uh, to end up with the with the oral surgery specialization but um, it was uh, it was clear for me that i uh, want to to proceed in uh, implantology from that time that was back in uh, 2000, 2003, uh, 2003, 2004, as I um, finished a degree uh, of oral surgery at uh, Berlin University. Well, I must be Persian because I, I love blood and guts. I mean, I, I, think, <laughs> I, think, I think a composite filling, like, is, I mean, I do them all the time, but they're, kind, they're so boring compared to pulling out an impacted wisdom tooth. I mean, how, how could you compare placing an implant or pulling out an impacted wisdom tooth to an MOD composite? I mean, one is like you could almost fall asleep while you're doing it, and the other one is just like total intensity. So, uh, yeah, I, I get the blood and guts. You, it seems like so many of your cases, um, um, you're using uh, magnification, uh, microscope. I mean, um, it just, I mean, what, 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 are, your, what are your thoughts on, um, I mean, endodontists are starting, all endodontists will say that sometimes, you know, they'll buy a microscope and they'll say at least 10% of the cases, when they just get magnification, they do higher quality. Um, how often are you using a microscope? Um, if you allow me, I want I want to to describe how I uh, got in touch with uh, microscope dentistry. That was uh, that was back in uh, uh, 2004, as I finished uh, the uh, oral surgery specialization in Berlin. I decided to uh, to leave Germany for. Uh, minimum one year to just have experience outside of this country in uh, another uh, English speaking country. So uh, I applied in uh, several clinics in UK, in London and uh, surrounding area of London. Uh, and I was accepted in um, uh, 2000, end of 2004 in a multidisciplinary clinic in Gatwick, London Gatwick. So I shifted to from uh, uh, from Berlin, where I was living at that time. I shifted. Uh, I moved to uh, to London Gatwick, and I started uh, I started the job in this multidisciplinary clinic. Uh, they had um, uh, they used to have a, a, a specialist in endodontics who was uh, using a very old Pico microscope of Carl Zeiss in this clinic. And um, this time I had, uh, I had the idea to, to check my surgeries, my implant surgeries, uh, what I was responsible for in this clinic, I was in charge for, uh, under the microscope he was using, because he, were, he, were, uh, he was just uh, coming to the clinic for a few days, for three days per week, and uh, the other time this microscope was free. So I asked him and he, he agreed and uh, I started to check my, uh, uh, my implant surgeries under this microscope and I uh, was just shocked to see what I was doing to my patients. Um, you know, the, all my colleagues in, in that time, they, they used to say uh, that Benham is a very precise surgeon, but I was a precise conventional oral surgeon. Under the microscope, uh, I saw uh, really a new world, you know. Uh, everything was different and everything was so big and uh, uh, I could see all my failures I uh, was doing during the surgery. So I started to, to think about uh, getting new instruments 
for the surgeries because uh, the conventional instruments for implant surgery are much too big to use them under the microscope. And um, so I uh, went through the literature uh, at that time for Dennis Schanelek, for example, you, uh, you, uh, you certainly know the name, Dennis Schanelek from Santa Barbara and uh, Tibets and Adriana McGregor, those people, I uh, went through their publications and, but those pe people were dealing with, um, with periodontology or microscopic periodontology, not exclusively with um, microscopic implantology. But I got some ideas from them and uh, also from uh, Markus Lutzler and Otto Zur from Munich and Reno. Those are, um, um, are the people uh, I have learned a lot from them. And I have taken over ideas from them, but I needed new instruments. And uh, so I started to negotiate with, uh, industri uh, with, with the industry, for example, with you, Freedy, with, uh, I don't know, can I, uh, can I say the names here? Absolutely. This is Dentistry Uncensored. You can tell us anything you want. In fact, I want to know about which city was more fun to uh, party in, London or Berlin? <laughs> I mean, uh, Berlin at that time was a little bit boring. That was 2004. <laughs> <laughs> London was, was much better, and uh, I was much younger. You can imagine it was a it was a tough time. But uh, right now, um, uh, I would I, I I like Berlin more than more than London because uh, Berlin developed uh, amazingly during uh, uh, during last ten years. So. Um, just to come back to the to the session I was talking about. Yeah, uh, please, please name the companies. Please, please, please. Uh, yeah, you have my sound everything. Yeah, you're you doing great. Okay, okay, okay. So I um, I started negotiations with you, Freedy, with Esculap and Helmut Zepf Medical Techniques, and unfortunately I couldn't uh, come uh, to to a result with. Um, uh, with um, Esculap and Eufridi, but Helmut Zepf, this is a very small and traditional uh, uh, company in Tuttlingen. Um, I have been working and developing with them since years, and uh, they are also my, um, my fixed sponsors for all my uh, what, what is what is the www for their their website um, to go to their website? Uh, uh, Zep Zep. How do you spell that? Uh, yeah, Z E P F. Z E P F. Z E P F. Is, is the first letter you're saying Z? Zep. Yeah, Z Z Z. Okay. Z, Z E P F. E. Okay. P Medical F. instruments. Medical instruments. Okay. Yeah, I noticed. Um, I noticed the Germans pronounce Z differently than I know. You, what you say, Z? What? Zept? Zep. They Zep. say, yeah, Zep. Is for the letter Z. Founder of the the company Helmut, and uh, the surname is Zep. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, the the address, the web address, is zepdental.com. Zepdental.com. Okay. So we started developing new instruments for uh, for some new ideas I had in that uh, in that time. So in that time, and um, we uh, could pass all the uh, you know uh, all the government uh, necessary authorization for for developing new instruments and uh, we could end up to bring out uh, up to now more than 20 instruments for uh, microsurgical implant surgery, especially for um, two techniques um, which I have published worldwide. Uh, the first one is microscopically guided external sinus floor elevation. Wow. Uh, uh, where uh, where we developed uh, 18, no, no, 17 instruments, new instruments for 
And uh, the second technique is uh, the socket and reach preservation technique of Shakibai. And especially for uh, these two techniques, we have developed uh, uh, six new instruments. And uh, they started promoting those instruments and taking them to the international, into the international uh, catalog of ZEP in 2000 and uh, 2010. From that time, they have been selling the, the instruments regularly and we are use, using them for my international courses and uh, uh, Congress events also worldwide. And what do these interest, instruments do for you that you were not able to find beforehand? So uh, the special, there are special factors or special points uh, uh, which are which made them different, uh, which, which make them different uh, in comparison to the normal uh, external sinus lift instruments, for example. Yeah. Uh, first of all, we have uh, smallized the size the size of the instruments. Uh, th those instruments are one-fourth or one-fifth of the normal size instruments for sinus lift, first of all. Uh, secondly, we have uh, changed the, the tip angles of the instruments because, because um, once you are using the microscope, you are not able to, um, to move your, your body you know, like uh, like a normal surgeon without optical magnification, you are uh, usually fixed in your position like this. And this is the reason why working uh, under the microscope is much more ergonomical than uh, without microscope. Because you are fixed in your position and you don't move like this. Uh, and uh, so it's ergonomical. Therefore, the instruments have to change the angle because the the surgeon is fixed normal uh, normally in one or two different positions under the microscope so we changed the angles and adapted them to uh, the view direction of the surgeon the third point we have uh, changed the surface of the uh, of the instruments. Normally, uh, the surfaces are uh, highly polished of the normal instruments, and uh, this is um, very annoying for the surgeon to work with them under the microscope because they reflect the light into the eyes of the of the surgeon. So that was the reason why we. Um, uh, sandblasted, uh, sandblasted the surfaces of all our microscopic instruments. And uh, the last point, uh, and the fourth was uh, to sharpen the ends of the tips. I mean, normally in in uh, in a normal uh, uh, normal sinus lift instruments, they have rounded tips because the surgeon. Uh, doesn't want to injure the the Schneiderian membrane during the elevation, uh, but uh, once you are able to look into the into the sinus bottom with the microscope and with the uh, um, um, with the optical magnification, you are able to check your movements and to control your movements visually. So you see what you are doing and how you are elevating um, the membrane and we sharpen the ends of the of the um, of the instruments to put less pressure on, on the membrane on the on the bone in the sinus bottom without any contact to the membrane but you know describing the theory of this technique is uh, is one part and experiencing the uh, the uh, technique practically is another part. The people have to um, the people who are interested in those techniques. They have to come to our courses and to see what we are doing, 
and which benefits they can get out, they can bring out uh, out of this out of these techniques for for their daily work and uh, uh, implant therapy. So, where would they find a list of where your hands-on surgical courses are? Would it be to go to uh, Dr. Shakibai dot com, D R S H A K I B A I E dot com? Is that where they would find a list of where your courses are? Yes, we have uh, we have a special part uh, in our website for education and congresses, which is um, regularly updated. Uh, uh, by my by my admin and uh, the next opportunity to come to one of my practical courses is in uh, Dubai uh, April 10 uh, less than two months on the Microvision World Congress may, may I show you the prospect I have the prospect here absolutely this is the prospect and the name of the Congress Microvision Micro Congress April yes, seventh Mac to April ten, twenty sixteen. Exactly. This is this is my this this will be my next event. But you can see there are world famous speakers in micro dentistry in all the all the branches or all the uh, subjects. There are uh, there will there will be a part for aesthetic dentistry on the microscope, for endodontics uh, on the microscope perio and implantology and I take over the, microsco the microscopy implant part with a lecture and also uh, with a practical course on, on uh, um, topic external sinus lifting but after my experience on uh, on AMED in 2014 where um, uh, on uh, at Maryland University November 2014 at Maryland University that was my my first uh, uh, speaker's activity in the U.S. market, and it was very interesting. The people in the Congress, they were, they were, they were amazed uh, on my work, and they came to me and uh, asked me, <laughs> you know, what the hell are you doing in Tehran <laughs> with your concept? How do you find the right patients for your concept? And, and uh, does the people understand in this market what you are doing with the microscope? This is a unique concept. I mean, only few people are um, working exclusively in implantology under, under the microscope. And one of them is uh, practicing right now in Tehran, you know. And this is uh, very unusual. So um, after my experience on AMED Congress, where uh, my presentation was... Um, was uh, voted as the Congress best presentation afterwards. Um, I became interested uh, to to uh, have some activities in North America, and we started to, to talk about this with um, with Ken Sarota also, and also with uh, with Jack Dillenberg. I have to, you know, Jack Dillenberg from Arizona University. The oh, he's he's been my friend for thirty years. Yes, he told me that. I have to send you best regards from him. I just met him last uh, last week in Dubai. In, in Dubai. Yes, in Dubai on EDEC, and um, we had a we had a long meeting together with his whole delegation. He was there with with his delegation from Arizona University, and um, we are about to to start uh, cooperation with Arizona University, but. Um, uh, I am interested to, to to increase my activity in North America market. Well, you know, um, Dental Town could put on that course. I mean, Jack can do it at his school. He's right up the street for me. He's like one of my best friends ever. Um, Dental Town could also put it on because we um, we we put on courses at the uh, a casino right next to our office. Um, um, what's the name of the was it Talking Sticks Casino? And we have a we have a clinic. Um, there's a there's a um, homeless shelter clinic that uh -huh. um, that has got permission from the uh, Arizona State Board of Dental Examiners that um, if someone like you, a licensed dentist, comes in, can do these procedures, and other dentists can come in if um, and they you know they don't they're allow, allowed to do surgical hands-on procedures at the CAS. It's the CAS Institute or CAS.org. It's, it's with Dr. Chris Bolchek, which is another good friend of Jack Dillenberg. But, um, you know, another thing I was thinking about what would really do to, is um, 
there's 210,000 dentists on Dental Town. We put yeah. up 350 courses. They've been viewed over half a million ten times, and now they have the um, the the app on the um, smartphone. Okay. And on the smartphone, um, um, you, it has the online um, it has the uh, the online CE courses. So 40 40,000 dentists downloaded the uh, Dental Town app from every single country uh, okay. measured by iTunes. If you put up a, a course on your microscope, sinus lifts, or whatever, yeah. um, all, all the Americans would see that. Then they would want to come see hands-on. Ah, this is this is a very nice way to promote the course. Oh, absolutely, and and I love it because I agree, I agree totally with you. Yeah, and I love it because last night a friend of mine, uh, Neil in Kathmandu, was saying that he projects these online CE courses. Uh, on the screen for his study club in Kathmandu, Nepal. So, I'm, so they're having a study club, and you know you can't have a speaker in Kathmandu come in from Tehran without you know spending a lot of money. And yeah. so they're they're sitting there, and and so that would that would build up. You would be educated dentists in dental schools all over. I mean, I've been in so many dental schools in Shenzhen and in India where the online CE on Dental Town is a huge part of their curriculum. So you would be educating dentists in every single country. And then the ones who want to um, have the money and the the passion uh, yeah. to come see you hands on. So, so work with. Uh, so I, I recommend um, emailing. I'm Howard at DentalTown.com. Yeah. The person that puts up all our courses is Howard Goldstein. So since there's two Howards, he goes by Hogo H O G O at DentalTown.com. But email um, Hogo at DentalTown.com and put up any and all courses you want to. I mean, I, I, I seen, I've seen so much of your work. Ken Sirota thinks you walk on water. Um, Ken, Ken Sirota and I are both just amazed at what you're doing. Yeah, thank you very much. So, so um, I mean, oh, we yeah. have... Yeah. No, go ahead. Yeah, sorry for interrupting you. Uh, we, we will have our first Canadian course I, I, I mean, uh, I don't know if you are informed so far. Um, Ken Sarota and Dan Hagi, they are uh, preparing my first Canadian course. I mean, this is a whole symposium because uh, I, will, I will have one day to lecture theoretically uh, on my inventions uh, of uh, sin microscope uh, uh, guided sinus lift and socket and reach preservation techniques the first day. And the second day is pure, pra purely practical, and um, that will take place uh, in Toronto at Toronto University. Uh, I mean, uh, on 15, from 15 to 16 of, of May this year. And um, I am really very excited uh, to go to Canada for, for the first time with this concept and uh, to be supported uh, by by the, by this by these guys, uh, I mean, and uh, they have already um, already confirmed the the, so the support of the industry. They they are willing to to come to this uh, to this event. Uh, all my um, sponsors, international sponsors, are already uh, willing to come uh, into the event and we, we could do that uh, like this also in US that will um, certainly succeed because um, it's a unique concept and uh, uh, the implant um, implant therapy must become more precise and uh, uh, more minimally invasive uh, as all the disciplines in dentistry do and well, this, I, I've yeah, this will yeah. be the future in, in the future in implant surgery, and all the people are doing implant. One day they will realize uh, the techniques are a little bit, you know, little bit old and little bit tough for the patient. And uh, uh, I mean, even if they are not willing to to learn uh, the the new minimally invasive technologies, the patients will come to them and force them to integrate those new microscopic techniques in their concepts. So are you doing all your implant surgeries under a Zeiss microscope? Yes, we have, uh, uh, we have just recently opened our new clinic in Tehran, which is, uh, 
which is, uh, I mean, the first um, exclusively limited um, a clinic to implant microsurgery in whole Asia. We have some uh, clinics uh, on this topic or with this activity field in Japan, but uh, they, are, they are covering the whole dentistry. They're making the periodontology, they're making aesthetic dentistry, crowns, bridges, and everything. But we are absolutely limited to my inventions and to implant microsurgery, which starts from removing of the tooth. And this is very important to see that implantology starts from the minimally invasive removing of the tooth. And uh, this is a much more important part than the implant surgery itself. Because I am able with new techniques, with new techniques of vertical tooth extraction to preserve the whole structure of the socket. And in the same time, I can uh, provide the patients with um, new materials to fill the socket and to, uh, you know, to um, avoid um, uh, resorption process, resorption process of, of, the, of the alveolus and of the alveolar ridge. So this way I can um, simplify uh, uh, the implant surgery afterwards on the one hand. Now, on the other hand, I can increase the quality of the implant surgery and uh, keep it minimally invasive because I have a great ridge, a great three-dimensionally preserved ridge, and I can place the implant in the, in the right position in the right prosthetically important uh, important angle, you know, uh, with the right di diameters, I mean, uh, diameter and length. And this is very important. I mean, we are running a minimally invasive implantology concept. And implant microsurgery is only one anchor of, uh, of this concept. We have few anchors, which is uh, which one is, uh, one of them is uh, minimally invasive tooth extraction. Second one are prevention techniques for the, for the reach after the tooth extraction. Third one are uh, 3D um, analysis uh, programs uh, for radiology. You, you know them, we, we all know them. And the fourth one is uh, using microsurgery for the implant surgery itself and all the, you know, um, all the adjacent um, augmentation procedures for, for bone grafting and for uh, soft tissue grafting and like that. Um, I call it minimally invasive implantology, not only implant microsurgery. So we just opened uh, our clinic recently uh, here in Tehran and uh, we have uh, installed the first uh, Carl Zeiss Pro Ergo, you might know the name. This is the motorized system of uh, Carl Zeiss, uh, the motorized microscope of Carl Zeiss, and uh, in my eyes, uh, the, the complicated and the best system in the world right now for dentistry. And uh, we are uh, uh, about to upgrade the system with uh, all the uh, you know, uh, audio, visual, uh, uh, HD, uh, filming and photographing systems. I have already ordered uh, the cameras and uh, uh, the adjacent technology for it, uh, and we will upgrade the system in two months. So um, we will be able to um, to film all the, all the procedures we are we are doing here in Tehran, and to, to broadcast them uh, worldwide to uh, international events or uh, to other courses uh, on uh, microdentistry. That is so amazing. That is so cool. I hope you make us a course for Dental Town. I will certainly do that. Uh, let us uh, work out the details uh, from this. Uh, I am very interested to have some uh, further information about your clinic uh, because, you know, uh, if you want to go in this uh, in this um, branch of education, Howard, uh, then uh, you know we have to attract um, our you know my 
my dentists or the dentists are coming to my courses, for example, at Carl Zeiss Academy in, in Switzerland and Germany. Uh, I mean, uh, by the way, I am the head of the implant section of Carl Zeiss Academy in Switzerland and Germany. Uh, I have been uh, the head for more than five years and my contract will end in 2017. So I will remain in this position for next two years. Um, the courses are full, you know, and the dentists who are coming to my courses are the, late, the leading dentists of their countries. Those are people who have already experienced implantology for many years and um, they have been working on microscope and with optical magnification for many years and you know they want to make the next step and they want to rise up the, the quality of, of, uh, of their uh, implant uh, treatments uh, higher to, to the next level. So um, we, should have a, we should have the right promotion concept to interest those uh, and to attract and interest those dentists from USA to come to come to uh, to our course in I don't know where is your where is your clinic located Phoenix Arizona okay and uh, do you have uh, microscopes there and uh, um, surgical motors and I don't know all the equipment <clears throat> well uh, when you right? when you use your uh, Carl Zeiss uh, microscope motorized is it mounted on the ceiling or do you use a ground uh, microscope that you can move around in your clinic yeah you can you can do both I mean uh, uh, my my microscope is mounted on the ceiling but uh, this microscope uh, is provided in three versions, mounted on the wall, mounted on the ceiling, and on a base, on a, a rolled base, which you can move from room to, to room. So and you have, uh, yes, you have, yeah, well, uh, yeah. no, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I'm sure we could get one for the course at the uh, CAS. You know, the thing, the thing about the United States is that, um, it's one country, but your dental license is for individually for each state. So if a dentist goes to a course that's not in their state, their license doesn't work. So, so Phoenix uh, or, you know, so a, a, a center has to get permission from a board to accept licensed dentists. And the, the, only, the only place I know of that um, east of the Miss, or west of the Mississippi River is in Phoenix at the CAS Institute uh, for uh, Homeless Veterans, and uh, so uh, I'm sure I'm sure if you have a course there, uh, Zeiss would show up with a microscope that you could use during the course. Yeah, I mean I can send you some pictures from uh, from my courses in Switzerland. Normally, um, as the the lecturer has a has a special table, you know, I am sitting in the front to be able to project uh, the whole procedures uh, to the audience. And the audience is sitting in front of me. Normally we have uh, 10 to 16 participants in each course. And all of them, they have a Pico microscope installed on their working place. And uh, you know, they have, a, they have a surgical motor, they have a, they have a, a straight hand piece uh, and they um, uh, certainly must have uh, a basic microsurgery implant set of Shakibai and a second set, which is especially for uh, microscope, microscope guided sinus lift. Uh, also, they, uh, it means they, meaning, meaning they need two surgical sets from, uh, from Helmut Zepf. And uh, I think they have, they have a distribution in USA and uh, we could contact them. Uh, they would uh, certainly uh, consider to support to support us, uh, and Zeiss would certainly also support my courses because I am one of the international instructors of Zeiss worldwide. Um, I mean, just the same way Ken Sarota and Dan Hagi are doing right now in in Canada. Yeah, they they could uh, provide you uh, with latest information how they organize the course. 
uh, and um, regarding the promotion, you are the big boss <laughs> to to promote the course uh, for the for USA in the best way. Yes, and I, I think you doing a podcast and doing an online CE and us, uh, we we can put that email in front of three hundred thousand dentists. So it, it would be it would be very very fun. Um, so let, let's start with the the, the extraction. So. Instead of just using an elevator and rocking the tooth all around, you're basically saying that's a little bit too much trauma, and you're trying to remove the tooth without a bunch of trauma. So how do you remove a tooth uh, with the microscope? Um, How are you removing it with less trauma? So, you know, when we are going to this subject, we have to talk about vertical extraction. Normally, when when we take the forceps, and, and uh, uh, you take the tools to, to remove it. Uh, we move the tools in different directions and also in horizontal direction. Every movement in horizontal direction of the tools to get it loose uh, and to, to be able to, to get it out of, of, the, of the socket is like, uh, I tell it, uh, I call it poison for the rich. It means with with every uh, horizontally with every horizontal movement of the root, um, the we take the risk to break the rich structure, or even to uh, to remove some parts of uh, the rich structure or of the rich bone together with the with the with the with the root. So the first point is to think about the movement direction of the root when we start the extraction. So there are different techniques uh, which uh, enable um, the surgeon to work just in vertical direction. First of all, there is a system called uh, Ben X system. You might know it. The Ben X system is also uh, produced or manufactured by Zep Dental, and it is uh, you know it is like you're, a, you're saying Ben X B E N E X. Yeah, Ben X Ben, and then second word X. Just a just a letter X Ben X B E N E X. One word or two? This is one word. Okay, Ben X. Okay, Ben X extractor. Right. Okay. Yes, Ben X extractor. And um, this, is, uh, this is a very useful uh, and very great uh, device we can use for, um, for vertical extraction. But uh, it technically, we have, uh, we have to have adjacent teeth uh, as anchors, you know, as hippomochlion. Uh, so uh, this, is the, this is the first technique we can use to, to act minimally invasive on uh, tooth extraction. The second part, on uh, in cases where we unfortunately <laughs> do not have adjacent teeth, uh, we can make a decapitation. It means uh, we remove the, the crown firstly, and then we have the pure root in the socket. We go into the root with uh, very thin uh, bores, very thin Lindemann bores, I mean the, the, the thinnest, and separate the root in uh, different sections or in uh, different compartments and try to and this 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 um, stage of of extraction can be checked and can be uh, overviewed or supervised by the microscope and what what city are they in benex benex yes i didn't get no what, what what country are they from Benex is is uh, you mean the development? Yeah, well the the company it's uh the company is Zep company. But but is that in Germany? Yes, that's in Germany. That's in Tuttlingen. Okay. The, I think the, I think it's the headquarters. Uh, the headquarters of Zep and the production site is in Tuttlingen. Okay, that's yeah. a hard one. Yeah. I just I just uh, two months ago I visited them. I paid them a visit. In the headquarters, and and uh, uh, visited also the production site. This is a this is a traditional small 
company, but uh, they are producing very, uh, you know, uh, high quality uh, dentistry instruments. And uh, the big point of this on this um, uh, manufacturer or company is that the point that they are very flexible and they can integrate new developments uh, into their regular program very fast. And this is the big difference be between this company and the huge companies like uh, Esculap or Ufridi, you know. They are very slow in integrating of new developments and that was the reason why they didn't cooperate me, uh, with me uh, 10 years ago. Well, you know, the, um, in the New York Stock Exchange, yeah. the, five, the 500 largest companies in 1950, by 2015, only 12% of them were still in business for that very reason. So, you know, it's creative destruction. So you would think in 1950, if I said, here's the 500 largest companies, you would say, these will be the greatest companies forever. And yet they have a 88% mortality rate in yeah. just 65 years because of that very reason. They get so big exactly. that they just crumble and they always get ran over from behind. My favorite business book was Only the Paranoid Survived by Andy Grove. He says, everybody's looking out their windshield. Exactly. It's their rear view mirror. He says, you're going to get crushed from behind. 88% of the time you're going to die because someone's going to come up behind your business and pass you. Because you're, you're you don't get it. Um, I want I want to when you're working under those microscopes. What magnification are you working under? I mean, eight, ten, fifteen. Yes, this is this is a, a very a very good question. I am uh, frequently asked uh, all around the world. Uh, this this is the question on the magnification power we are using every day. I mean. Uh, in the um, in the first phases of my um, of, of in, in the starting phases of my activity with microscope, I started with a normal loop, which had only a magnification factor of two. I used it more than uh, three or four months. That was back in 2004 in in London. I mentioned before. And then I increased the magnification factor to a stronger loop to five times. Both were from Carl Zeiss. They, have, uh, they are named uh, iMac. They have a, a small, uh, small loop and uh, the, a bigger loop which uh, provides um, a magnification factor up to five times. So after using the um, after getting used to uh, to work with um, with loops, I shifted to microscope after almost eight months. And uh, in the beginning, I was afraid to increase the magnification factor over ten times because you know uh, I was still not adapt adapted with my with my uh, with my feet with my manual work um, to greater magnification factors than 10 it took it takes time it takes time a little bit and for me it took uh, more than one year to increase the, the power over 10 times but right now for example for um, minimally invasive tooth extraction we use uh, normally uh, uh, between 8 and 12 or 14. This is the interval we are using for uh, minimal invasive tooth extraction. Uh, for um, sinus lift procedures, we are using 10 uh, up to 18, sometimes 20, sometimes 20, and uh, those are the intervals we are using uh, in our clinic. But it is important to say that we don't use the microscope permanently throughout the every surgery just for you know decisive um, parts of the surgery uh, we we, uh, we bring the microscope into the work because it's uh, it's beside beside my head the microscope on the right side and the the um, the surgeon
electrical light is on the left side. And normally I use the loops and sometimes I bring the microscope into the, into the surgical field and I use it for normally 15 minutes, 20 minutes and I uh, uh, shift uh, to, to the loop afterwards. So it's, uh, you know, uh, it's not a permanent uh, working on the microscope uh, what we are doing here in the clinic. But um, we have to, to show the procedures to the users. Um, they, will, they will understand it better when they see one or two surgical pr procedures um, in a workshop, for example, or in our clinic. And what type of sinus lift do you like to do? I mean, there's very different kinds of sinus lift surgeries. Do you like any one more than the others? Yeah, we have, uh, I mean, uh, when you are talking about sinus lift, there are uh, mainly two procedures. This is, a uh, uh, the first one is the open procedure, the, the classic uh, technique of Tatum, you, uh, you may know. And the second one is the closed procedure, uh, the intracrestal procedures, a procedure from Summers, you, you may know uh, Summers. And, uh, uh, but we have different conditions we have to have different clinical or different clinical condition. conditions are required to be able to do uh, those surgeries for example for the summers technique we need to have minimum uh, five millimeters of reach height to provide the patient internal sinus lift Otherwise, when uh, we do the, the internal sinus lift by a ridge which is, um, I mean, uh, uh, smaller or, or uh, smaller in size, I mean, height than five millimeters, um, the risk for membrane perforation will be too high, uh, too uh, too much, or too high uh, during the internal uh, internal sinus lift procedures. So minimum five millimeters in reach height. When we have less than five millimeters in reach height, we have to change to the open technique, which means we have to prepare to prepare a window uh, for the sinus lift in uh, crystal zygomatico alveolaris to work indirectly and to elevate the, mem to, to elevate the membrane indirectly through the window and uh, set the implants uh, intracrestally from, from the downside. So the clinical conditions are uh, the crucial points to, uh, uh, to decide the technique. Now, have you, uh, now Hilt Tatum, right now he's, he's in France, isn't he? Didn't he move from uh, Clearwater, Florida to France? Yes, originally he's a France. Yeah, and where's uh, where's Summers right now? Summers, uh, I don't know. He's practicing in USA, but I don't know the faculty. Is I I think is uh, rec is retired right now. Is uh, he doesn't work anymore? I think. Well, if he's retired, I'll still drag him up for a podcast. <laughs> I, I told Hilt if he didn't do a podcast, I'll fly all the way to France to get it. Um, yeah. Are you, are you, um, help, help the listeners out, you know, when they go to the Cologne meeting, the, uh, what is that, the IDF meeting, International, I, IDS, IDS, International Dental, what's the stand for, IDS? IDS is uh, Internationale Dental Show. Okay, In show. Um, when, la the last IDS show, which I think is the greatest meeting in the world, um, because so many companies release all their new products. They time it every two years for the show. So it's just like, you know, just the newest everything. But how does a, how does a dentist navigate? Last year, they had 175 different kinds of dental implants. So you're talking to thousands and thousands of individual dentists who are overwhelmed with all of these choices. Are you, is titanium, 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 or do you like some systems more than others? Because you're looking at it under a microscope, and, and you're, you, see, you seem to be so precise and so accurate. Um, what, what, are you, what are you seeing under a microscope? Are they all the same, or do you have favorites? Um, 
I mean, <laughs> um, to answer this question, uh, you know, I might be not the right person because uh, I have been using uh, uh, one system uh, during uh, the last 10 years. And uh, my favorite system is, is Camlog. The name is Camlog. The company is Alta Alta Tech and is uh, distributed in the US market uh, through Henry Schein. Henry Schein has, uh, has take, uh, taken over this company, I think six or seven years ago. This is Germany, Germany's number one. Uh, few people know that, that, Ger that uh, the first one in Germany, the first, the most sold um, implant system in Germany is Camlog system, but it is uh, not so well known in in the U.S. market as it is in Germany. But um, I mean, I I, um, I, ha I have grown with this system uh, during the last ten years, and I made all my I research and uh, all my publication also with this system, and they are my main uh, sponsor for uh, worldwide um, education also. But uh, I recently, just a few years ago, after shifting to Tehran, and I shifted uh, to Tehran in 2011, after uh, receiving official invitation of Iranian president, I mean, I didn't mention that. Um, that was the reason why I decided to, to start a clinic in Tehran but, uh, you know, I am just uh, seven months of the year staying here in, in the clinic in Tehran and the, the rest of the, of the time I am, I am cruising around the globe uh, from Congress to Congress, from university to university to teach those new techniques. But in Iran, I was forced to, to change the, the implant system because Camlog um, is still not present in the market here. And I have chosen another big German name, and this is uh, Friadent Exive. You, you might know Friadent Exive is spelling is, is X I V E. X X I V E. X I V E. Let me see. Let me see if I can get close enough to it on Google. Yeah, um, X I V E. V E. This Implant. is the name of the system. But uh, the manufacturer is Friadent. Friadent. Interesting. And that's, a, and that's a German company? Yes, this is a German. This is an old and traditional German company in Mannheim. But... Uh, what, what, have, is their, what is their website? What is their www? Yeah, I, t I will tell you. They have also, also been taken over by a big uh, USA company. By Densply. Densply, exactly. And so uh, they name it right now Densply Implant Systems because Densply has integrated different systems into the company. Uh, and uh, the first one is uh, Priadent, which are Exive and um, Ankylos. And they have also taken over, I think, uh, Astratech from uh, Sweden. I want to ask you one last question because we're over time. Our show's an hour and it's already an hour and three minutes. Um, I always hear that in Germany, three out of four dentists place implants. That in Korea, South Korea, three out of four dentists place implants. How many dentists are in Iran, and what percent of them place implants? They uh, well, I don't know the exact uh, you know statistics uh, about um, um, implantology about uh, uh, place implants in the year in the Iranian market. But um, implantology is uh, getting very, very popular in Iran, especially uh, in the last five years. Uh, but, uh, I mean... How many uh, dentists do you think are in Iran? I mean, mostly, mo the, the, the great part of the, of the market is uh, dominated by uh, Korean companies, you know, because of... Uh, because of Weaking of Iranian currency for three years. Uh, almost all the people shifted to Korean companies because they are cheaper than uh, leading European and US companies. But uh, we have the big hope for the future after lifting the sanctions against Iran 
by 5 plus 1, uh, you may know uh, that uh, the leading companies will, uh, will, uh, in, uh, will get into the market again and uh, take, part, uh, uh, take part in the implantology market in Iran. I think uh, two out of five dentists are practicing implantology in, the, uh, in their practices in, in Iran right now. And, yeah, how but many, and how many dentists are there? Uh, right now, Iran has uh, more than uh, 25,000 dentists working in the market, uh, but the number of the dentists are, uh, are increasing very fast because uh, Iran has more than uh, 30 denti uh, dental faculties. Uh, I mean, Iran is a big island, big dentistry island in Middle East. You can compare this market to to other countries uh, in this area because uh, you know there's a huge there's a huge number of, of dentists and there are uh, most of them are under 40 the majority of them are very young and they are hungry for for new technology and uh, new science and knowledge so that will be also a great market for dental town to to get in I would love that. In fact, my goal is to, uh, before I die, to lecture in every country on earth. And I've never lectured in Tehran. I've never been there. And I cannot wait uh, to lecture there someday, see you, see your clinic, uh, everything. We will make it happen in future. Surely. Okay. And Kent, I, I hope you put an online C course on Dental Town. I think that would be amazing. I will try my best. Uh, I, we have We have to prepare that. And um, I will I will check the opportunity to come to uh, Arizona. Uh, I mean to come to Phoenix, especially to uh, to meet the team of uh, of Jack Dillenberg at the university. And uh, I will uh, visit you and your team surely in the same time. Okay, we'll all go to dinner together. You, me, and Jack. That will be fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, Doctor Beatum Shakabi, thank you. Shakabai, thank Shak Ebai, thank you so much for spending an hour with me today, all the way from Tehran. Welcome. Thank you very much. It was my honor to be with you today.